President Muhammad Buhari in Mali for a one-day peace mission. The minimum is not a peace man or a protection. That is the solution to corruption in Nigeria. Senate calls for dissolution of Interim Management Committee of NDDC. And Nigeria's first female combat helicopter pilot, Tolulokwe Arutili, laid to rest. Hello, a very good evening and welcome to the news on the network service of NTA, reaching you live from Abuja with me, Joseph Johnson. Also on the news desk from Lagos Network Center is Michael Olale and Maria Madura in Jaws Network Center. President Mohamed Bouhari and other ECOWAS leaders have been talking to various uh, actors in the political crisis rocking the Republic of Mali. State House correspondent Adam Musamu gives us an update on the mediation talks in Bamako. Leaving Nigeria for the first time since the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic five months ago, President Mohamed Buhari, highly respected in the sub-region and beyond as a man of honor and integrity, is here in Bamako on a critical peace mission. This followed his briefing by leader of the ECOWAS mediation mission to Mali, former President Goodluck Jonathan, on the situation in the country. President Buhari therefore joined four other ECOWAS leaders, including the ECOWAS chairman, President of Niger, Muhammadu Izufu, to see what can be done urgently towards resolving the lingering political impasse in the country for sustainable peace, democracy, and development. Recalled that following the court order that nullified 31 parliamentary seats and awarded victory to those believed to be favored by government, Crisis erupted here with the opposition insisting that President Ibrahim Boubacar Kaita should resign, although he has three out of his second five-year mandate to execute. A communique that was issued at the end of the ECOWAS last mediation mission to this country, led by former President Goodluck Jonathan, speak to the urgency of forming a government of national unity with the following as a sharing formula of membership in the government. 50% for the ruling coalition, 30% for the opposition, and 20% for the civil society. This was rejected by members of the M5 resistance group, and fears are expressed that Mali might be heading for deeper crisis or even a civil war. President Muhammad Buhari and the ECOWAS leaders do not want such to happen, hence they are resolved towards achieving lasting political solution. Already, they have received adequate briefing from former President Goodluck Jonathan and thereafter met separately with the political actors in the country, including President Ibrahim Boubacar Kaita and members of the opposition groups led by Imam Mahmoud Diko, regarded here as highly influential. The meetings were held behind closed doors and we will keep you informed as soon as the possible agreements are made public. And uh, Vice President Emil Shibajo has welcomed the offer by the international community to support the successful execution of the National Economic Sustainability Plan. Vice President Oshibajo applauded the commitment of the international community to support Nigeria's response to the COVID-19 and the efforts to take advantage of the crisis to effect significant changes in the critical sectors of the Nigerian economy. At a meeting earlier today with representatives of the international community from the United States, the European Union, United Kingdom, agencies of the United Nations, World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. The president, or uh, vice president rather, also restated government's condolences on the recent killing of five aid workers by Boko Haram insurgents. The resident and humanitarian coordinator of the United Nations system in Nigeria, Edward Callan, and other members of the delegation commended the development and approval of the Economic Sustainability Plan, offering to assist in its implementation. The delegation plans to ensure there is an international alignment in support of the Nigerian government's response to coronavirus pandemic. 
Now let's take you to the National Assembly because the Senate has called for the dissolution of the Interim Management Committee of the Niger Delta Development Commission to pave way for the composition of its governing board. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nkwo reports. In the last two months, the Nigerian media has been inundated with stories of alleged financial recklessness in the Niger Data Development Commission. Both chambers of the National Assembly investigated the allegations and the report of the Senate Adult Committee has been presented and its recommendations approved. The NDDC Interim Management Committee should therefore be dissolved to pave way for the constitution of the Board of Directors in accordance with the Act. Apart from calling for the disbandment of the Interim Management Committee, the report recommended the establishment of monitoring and advisory committees, the commission to henceforth report directly to the President, review its corporate social responsibility and procurement process. Senate resolved that the Interim Management Committee should refund a total of 4.9 billion naira paid to staff and contractors in breach of procurement process. This includes the 1.4 billion naira it paid to its staff as palliative for COVID-19. The funds are to be returned to the coffers of the commission. They talk about spending 3 percent billion COVID. COVID-19 every same time in Nigeria is Lagos. The minimum is life imprisonment or amputation. That is the solution to corruption in Nigeria. We have let every of you today, they have no job, we are not safe. They forgot to tell Nigerians how they spend money when there was no body traveling, no car, no movement, interstate lockdown. We should look at the act itself, establishing the NDDC. Where are the lacunas or the inadequacies? We are on the same page with the executive arm of government on this. It also mandated its committees on ethics, privileges and public petitions to investigate alleged involvement of some members of the National Assembly in the Commission's contract awards. And I knew majority of members of the National Assembly have nothing to do with NDDC. Senate has called on the Federal Roads Maintenance Agency to immediately rehabilitate the spoilt portion of the road that leads to the Mambila Power Plant, that is, the Goje Mayo Selbe Gembu Road in Taraba State. It's such that if there is a cut in the road, there will be a total isolation of that region. And that will be dangerous for the projects the federal government has set forth uh, to undertake in Mambila. The legislators paid tribute to Nigeria's first female combat helicopter pilot, Dolulope Arotile, who died on Tuesday, 14th of July, 2020. I want to urge the federal government to try and provide succor to the immediate family of this young lady. Senate has adjourned to 15th of September, 2020, for its annual recess. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. Meanwhile, the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Goswil Akbabio, writes House of Representatives explaining that he was quoted out of context concerning allegations of NDDC contract award to lawmakers of the Ninth Assembly. National Assembly correspondent Lamia Lee reports. House Speaker Femi Bajabiamila had, as the commencement of plenary, said the House is instituting a legal action against the Minister on the matter. Shortly after, the Speaker brought to the notice of members the communication of the Minister. Permit me to explain that any reference to 50 or 60 percent during the investigative hearing was in answer to a question by a member of the committee as to whether or not a medical director could act as executive director of projects within the confines of the NDDC Act 2000. Thursday being the last day of the first legislative year of the Ninth House, plenary lasted several hours as 10 bills were passed. Among bills passed for second reading is the bill seeking restriction of legal proceedings against chief justices sponsored by Igariwe Iduma and a bill seeking compulsory treatment of victims of gunshot wounds from Wale Raji. Among establishment bills that passed second reading is the National Agency for Food Technology Bill sponsored by Chinedu Oga, a bill to establish Federal Polytechnic Garuko Kano State from Aliwudil 
in a bill to establish Federal Medical Center Ogoja Cross River State, sponsored by Agon Jarigbe. House adopted a motion on the need to stop incessant attacks in parts of Kaduna State and resolve to investigate misappropriation of 100 billion naira by the Northeast Development Commission. This consistent abuse of procurement laws, if not put in check, may defeat the purpose of the establishment of the commission. The lawmakers urged the repair of a key bridge in Bayelsa, which links communities to other parts of the country, as moved by Fred Ubwa, and urged government to set up National Council on Public Procurement, as moved by Idem Uime, to check flagrant disregard of procurement guidelines by MDAs. House has adjourned for annual recess to resume sitting on 15 September 2020. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. Still talking legislative matters, the National Iron Ore Mining Company, being moribund for years, will be part of the 2021 budget and be completed. This was during an assessment visit to the facility in Itakwe Kogi State by a delegation of the Senate and the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development. Mayor Ogidi reports. This is the National Iron Ore Mining Company, Niamco, sitting on 8,000 hectares of land at Etakwe in Kogi State. One can describe this facility as a lifeline to the much talked about Ajakuta Steel Company because about 2.1 million tons of iron ore can be sourced from here to feed Ajakuta at the first phase if work commences at the Ajakuta Steel Company. But there are challenges here. Staff strength is depleting. As of 2005, about 1,500 workers were here, but statistics reveal that in June 2020, the staff strength has reduced to 750. And there is also no beneficiation or super concentration plant that will going to beneficiate the iron ore that will be sourced from here to feed Ajakuta. But the federal government, through the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development, and the leadership of the National Assembly insist that there is hope here yeah, because the facility can be revived. And we have already spoken to the sole administrator to sit down in the 2021 budget and bring a 20, uh, what resources are required for a comprehensive technical audit of this plant. It's been idle for many years. So the technical audit will also provide the necessary upgrade. The technical audit that we are doing for Jakuta will also be done for this. And it's all within the purview of the funds that are already pledged. I will pray that we're able to bring it to fruition in a short time. It is quite assuring words from the delegation, but some facilities within the premises shows that much needs to be done because they have never been put to use for quite a long time. Mayor Ogidi, NT. Let's bring you some other news now. The federal government has received a grant of 890 million U.S. dollars from the Global Fund to fight HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria. And it is expected to be implemented within a period of three years, from 2021 to 2023. Minister of Health Dr. Osage Hanire, who made this known, described the grant as the largest made to any country in the fund cycle and demonstrates the global fund's confidence in the administration and programs of President Muhammad Buhari in the health sector. Basi Taikbang has small. The fund, since inception in 2002, has contributed to placing 1.04 million people living with HIV and AIDS on treatment in Nigeria. About 120,000 TB cases are identified and treated annually. This has led to a decline in malaria prevalence from 42% to 23%. Spanning 2010 to 2018, leading to the treatment of at least 4 million confirmed malaria cases annually. The implementation of this grant will especially target the poor, the most vulnerable and disadvantaged and those at higher risk of the target diseases to promote equity in access to healthcare services. In addition, the Global Fund also approved a new grant of $21.9 million to support Nigerians' COVID-19 response. 
the Minister of Health announced that Nigeria has increased its contribution to the Global Fund by 20% with additional pledge of 12 million US dollars for 2021 to 2023 cycle. Stakeholders in the health sector and development partners promise to work together in curtailing the prevalence of the diseases by 2030. Global Fund is a global partnership of government, civil society, and private donors established by the United Nations in 2002 for funding public health interventions for the eradication of HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria in countries of prevalence. Basi Taipan, NTA News. About 900 water supply schemes are to be carried in the second phase of the federal component of the Partnership for Expanded Water Supply, Sanitation and Hygiene, PWASH, across the selected states. Water Resources Minister Suleiman Adamu in Abuja flagged off the projects online. Musbao Danwahab reports. The officially flag of the federal component here is to is another step to rewrite the story of Nigeria's water supply, sanitation, and hygiene wash sector. It is aimed at addressing the challenge of lack of access to safe water and improved sanitation of one million people in some selected local government areas of the 10 qualified states. Services of 119 contractors have been secured to either construct, rehabilitate or upgrade 895 water supply schemes. Timely completion of the project is sacrosanct. But more significant here is a stern warning to the contractors to respect the terms and conditions and above all follow specification to standard. So there will be no cutting corners. But contractors must understand we will not tolerate cutting corners in this program. The specifications are such that we will only be paying for productive bubble that have adequate water quantity and quality. The contractors assured the federal government of due diligence and the ball has now been passed to the court of the affected state government to fulfill their part of a bargain awarding and beginning their respective project in earnest with the attainment of the national and international targets in mind. In Abuja, Muspao and Wahab, NC News. Following the postponement of the 2020 Hajj pilgrimage, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria says intending pilgrims who wish to recover their deposits from the state pilgrims welfare boards or private tour operators shall be refunded their money as the commission has already commenced the process with state pilgrims boards for onward disbursement. Chairman of the commission, Zikrullah Hassan, stated this while briefing the media on the 2021 Hajj pilgrimage. He indicated the pilgrims who wish to roll over their 2020 financial deposit to the 2021 Hajj will be given priority and the rights of first refusal next year's Hajj. The chairman, however, explains that agreements need to be signed, indicating willingness to do so. The commission will commence Hajj registration for 2021 from the 9th of September. 2020. In light of this, the huge portal for pregnant registration for 2021 has to be opened immediately for registration to commence. The National Hajj Commission advised intending pilgrims who made deposits with private tour operators and want their refund are to approach their respective travel agencies with duly signed service agreements and where disagreement arises, uh, they should make referral to the Commission for intervention. This is NTN Network News. Stay with us. More stories ahead. This is watching NTA Network News. A former Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice in Ondo State, Eitayo Jagadesan, has won the People's Democratic Party governorship primary election held on Wednesday, July 22. Uh, Olajide Bello reports that the chairman of Ondo State PDP governorship primary election and governor of Enugu State, Ifanyu Gwai, who supervised the conduct, announced the result.
The election, which involved over 2,000 delegates from the 18 local government areas of the state, was conducted in an atmosphere of peace and in compliance with COVID-19 protocols. The primary election, which was keenly contested, had eight aspirants, including the incumbent state deputy governor, Agwola Ajayi, the chairman on the state PDP governorship primary election, and governor of Enugu State, Ifai Ngwai, announced that Eita Jagede S.A.N. won the election, having pulled 888 votes to defeat his closest rival, the incumbent state deputy governor, Agwola Ajayi, who had 657 votes. He congratulates all of us. Gratitude to God, gratitude to the people of Ondo State. This is the beginning of great things to come. This is the second time Eita Jagede will be picking PDP governorship ticket having lost to the incumbent governor, Oluwarotimi Akeridolu, in 2016, from Akure Olajide Bello, NTA News. Still staying in Ondo, as women across the uh, globe, sorry about that, uh, Caretaker, an extraordinary National Convention Committee of All Progressives Congress, is determined to achieve genuine reconciliation among party faithful. Members of the party's Ondo State Reconciliation Committee at the end of a closed-door meeting said, this is evident with the successful conduct of the party's governorship primary that led to the emergence of incumbent Governor Olarotimi Akaradolu as APC flag bearer ahead of the October 10 governorship election. What is important is to carry everybody along in order to ensure victory for our party. We will do whatever is seemingly possible to ensure that we win the election in the understate. It is very, very critical to us. There is only uh, one interest to be, pro to be protected in democracy, and that interest is simple, the people. And when they say, who is the people, it means the majority. And this is what we are trying to achieve in Ondo. And I'm sure that by the time we complete our reconciliation process in Ondo, APC will be stronger than before. Some of the APC stalwarts at the party's national secretariat also spoke on the cordial relationship among members of the current legislature and the executive arms of the government. When we had a parliament, I mean, before now, that would take at least seven or eight months into the new year before they would pass a budget, it was the country that suffered for it. The Ninth Assembly will work collaboratively and cooperatively with the executive. Now, as women across the globe continue to raise their awareness on the promotion of women inclusivity in governance, the League of Women Voters in soliciting the support of Nigerian Television Authority in this regard. Elizabeth Mori reports that the all-female organization made their intention known during a courtesy call on the Director General of NTA, Yakubu Ibn Muhammad. In Nigeria, the national gender policy recommended 35% affirmative action for a more inclusive participation of women in politics. As agents of economic and political development, the League of Women Voters of Nigeria is in the forefront of facilitating women engagement in governance for the enthronement of good leadership in Nigeria and democracy. Our request includes our LDG to be an official media partner to NILO as an indigenous women's rights organization, <coughs> to air our jingle and documentaries as a form of partnership and support to women. The Hemsman of the NTA assured the women of the support of the largest television network in Africa. Our personality program one-on-one -on -one is going to be one hour and I uh, will dwell specifically on the League of Voters and what it does and um, what it needs done by others from the outside. So we're offering that uh, here and now. Once in a while, airing of your documentaries, you know, we can guarantee that. Where you must pay for anything, I want to assure you that you, you, know, you will get a very, very generous discount. Rape 
which is fast becoming a second pandemic, also formed part of their discourse. They unanimously advocate proper education of women and girls, as well as the protection of their rights. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NC News. President Mohamed Buhari has been commended for reappointing Sir Joseph Ntungari as Director General and CEO of Industrial Training Fund, ITF. Permanent Secretary, Minister of Trade and Investment, Dr. Sani Guazo, who conveyed the approval for the reappointment, says it is for a period of four-year term. The Permanent Secretary urges the Director General to continue to deliver on the mandate of the agency and assist the President to deliver on his promise of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years. Now to coronavirus update, schools will not reopen until safety measures for pupils and students are guaranteed by all stakeholders and all tiers of government. Now the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 gave this clarification at Thursday's briefing in Abuja. Meitare Iqben reports. The PTF says coronavirus is still very potent and spreading faster than human efforts to contain it. We had to postpone the briefing for Monday, 20th July, 2020, when the tweet from the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, who is a member of the Presidential Task Force, went viral. That singular piece of information in the public space is sufficient proof to Nigerians that the virus is real and does not discriminate. Testing of members has been a regular exercise for the PTF. And that policy would be sustained. It doesn't know whether you are rich or poor, healthy or not. And it is absolutely not an elite disease. On the Madagascar herbal drug? The initial temporary result had shown that its main ingredient is the same as Artemisia annua, which is grown in Nigeria. While the preparation at high dose showed activity in reducing frequency of cough, it did not show any evidence that it has a real curative property to, against the COVID-19 virus. The task force says it will not compromise safety ahead of school resumption. The WAYEC timetable, are you able to meet up with that date? Many states have come back to us and said they are unable to meet up with that date, which is why the Minister of Education explained that it would be dangerous to move children out on those dates and that it is not proper for WAYEC to then continue to insist on those dates. Therefore, we have requested that WAYEC give us, give us and the schools some time to, to meet up. On the forthcoming Ida Kabir celebration, state governments are advised to discourage activities that could worsen community spread of coronavirus. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikben, NTA News. The Nigeria Governors Forum is strengthening collaboration with national and international partners to increase capacity in the containment of COVID-19 and gender-based violence. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports that this was part of our communique drafted at the end of its 13th virtual meeting on COVID-19. Nigerian Governors Forum is sustaining collaboration with the EU and UN to strengthen fight against sexual violence for women and minors as a further commitment to the earlier state of emergency declared on the crime. The forum is in consultation with the Senate Health Committee and other stakeholders in the Health Ministry to facilitate the continuous implementation of basic health care provision fund. Nigerian governors are synergizing with the federal government to resolve the contentious provisions of the Executive Order 10 and utilize $100 million COVID-19 support facility from the World Bank. Governor of Delta State Ifain Okowa and Chairman of NGF Subcommittee Brief NGF on the coordinated efforts with Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 on strategies adopted for school reopening. 
The tax team leader for the World Bank states fiscal transparency, accountability, and sustainability, Yu Man Li, provided key updates on the program and actions for state governments to meet upcoming 2019 deadlines. National Coordinator of Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, Dr. Sani Aliu, made presentation to NGF on the need to strengthen risk communication pillar of COVID-19 response through relevant health agencies. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTN News. Time now to let Michael in Lagos take the next set of reports. Michael, you have it. Thank you, Joseph. Most of Eastern Lagos are already for the new roadmap and its challenges, as the timeline for the partial closure of the third Milan Bridge can be counted by the R. Dr. Ogunyemi reports on the traffic situation, rehabilitation efforts ongoing on alternative roads, as well as official details available to the motoring public. This is the third Mayland Bridge, and in a few hours from now, it would be partially closed to traffic, allowing only traffic from the Oworoshoki end to Lagos Island, while motorists who will be coming from Lagos to Oworoshoki would not be allowed to ply this road to enable contractors begin the first phase of the six-month-long rehabilitation. Although traffic would remain only on the Lagos-bound lane of the bridge, there are diversion points at Adeniji and Adekunle for alternative access at the stipulated time at midnight and 1 p.m. in the afternoon daily for the next three months. To reduce the expected gridlock, concerted efforts have been put into the rehabilitation of alternative roads, but the worry for motorists is how to cope with the situation. I live at Moshe. I have to check every morning from Idio Road down to this place. Without closing the Tom Milan Bridge, to move here on Monday, come and look at it. It's jam lock. So I think uh, there will be a problem for, for, for the masses and the economy too. And for those who want to get around a little faster, another alternative to decongest the road is taking to water. So we have put a new jetty at uh, the Adekunle hands of Yapa, so that people coming from uh, the mainland can easily access to the island and uh, Leki and uh, Marina. We put another jetty at Leki for this one, the new one, for, because we know that definitely water transportation will increase and we don't want such, such to come suddenly. With plans already finalized, equipment and traffic management officials deployed to strategic locations and diversion points mapped out. It becomes imperative that motorists cooperate by complying with traffic rules. In Lagos, Dotsun Okunyemi, NCA News. Now to security matter. In its quest to stamp out illegality and other forms of insecurities bedeviled in the country, the Nigerian Navy, in partnership with the Nigeria Police, are collaborating towards achieving a robust security. This was disclosed at a courtesy visit to the Nigeria Police Headquarters Zone 2 in Lagos by the Naval Doctrine and Assessment Team. Lee Nidiki has details. Winning the war against the various security challenges requires collaboration and application of critical strategies. The Nigerian Navy and the police are strategizing to enhance security operations within their limits. The Navy says that the safety requirements to support new strategies in the discharge of their duties will consolidate the existing security framework. For that consolidate on the existing levels of collaboration, and synergy. The Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone 2, Ahmed Ilyasu, emphasized that security of lives and property in line with the federal government's directive remains paramount. Policing now should be done with all sections and organizations. We have to close the gap and work together. Also pledged commitment to improving the combat readiness of personnel to meet the global standards. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. More reports with Joseph Johnson shortly after this break. Please stay tuned. 
This is NTN Network News and we are back in Abuja. Nigerian youth have been encouraged to embrace digital innovation and entrepreneurship with emphasis on acquiring skills rather than certificates in order to become potential employers of labor and contribute their quota in growing the nation's economy. These, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Ali Pandami, says is critical, especially as the federal government is working towards lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. Pantami said this during the virtual inauguration of six digital economy projects in Lagos, Enugu, Katsina, and Kaduna states. Many ongoing, at least training, that we are providing for Nigerians, some in the area of high tech, agri, which is another area that we feel there is need for our uh, agri to be integrated into digital sector so that we will try to enhance the productivity and the efficiency of the sector. The establishment of these six projects in the country will no doubt create employment opportunities to our teeming population growth. Block by block, center by center, state by state, zone by zone, the digital footprint and infrastructure master plan of this country will be executed. This will help our youths to expand their intellectual curiosity. It will aid learning. Beneficiaries of the projects are expected to utilize the facility effectively to better their skills. Let's now turn our attention to JAWS Network Center uh, for more reports. And here is Miriam. Miriam, it's good to see you. Good evening. You're welcome to JAWS. It's good to have you join us. The Operation Safe Heaven Detachment of the Nigerian military in JAWS has offered community service to crisis-ridden zones of Plateau State to strengthen civil military relations and instill confidence among the people. Saadat to Mohammed Kafa reports that this gesture is part of efforts to assist in rebuilding processes of affected communities in the state. Following violent conflicts in parts of the state with its attendant consequences, which has devastated the affected communities, to restore hope to the people, the Nigerian Defense Headquarters, through Operation Safe Heaven, renovated block of classrooms and read boreholes in Pakshu, Dute Oku, and in Kindero communities of Basa local government area of the state. As part of civil military cooperation, the Nigerian military is determined to wipe out undesirable elements, calling for cooperation from the communities. Now that the, project, the, the operation is moving from the kinetic stage to the non-kinetic stage, he, the CDS now feel they should give people a stick, something that they will hold on to and say, I know that the government is uh, interested in their being. We can't achieve peace by force. We all have to work together. And so this project is in line with our operations, particularly Operation Accord. Governor Lalo represented, appreciated the efforts of the Nigerian military for not only maintaining peace, but also providing social amenities to the affected communities. The success of every administration is the sustenance of peace and harmony amongst the people. If we do not sustain peace, there is no way we can enjoy this kind of development. Exposing perpetrators, they noted, is key to finding lasting peace in Plateau State. In Joss, Saadat Muhammad Kafa, NTA News. In continuation of efforts to cushion the effects of COVID-19, wife of the president, Aisha Buhari, has distributed palliatives to vulnerable women in Plateau State. Wife of Plateau State Governor, Regina Lalong, distributed the items to the women groups. Ali Sabatukai Andrew reports. The distribution was intended to meet the needs of vulnerable women drawn from the different groups within the state. Wife of the Plateau State Governor, Regina Lalong, said women are made vulnerable due to a wide range of socioeconomic conditions and needs to be supported, especially at times like this. We register our sincere gratitude to Her Excellency for her consigned and kind gesture to women as she distributes relief materials and food items across the state 
through Architecture Assured Program. Women groups that benefited from the distribution included Arewa Women, Cleaners Association, Market Women Association, Islamic Council Association, and Women with Disabilities, who were all full of delight and praise. We appreciate their effort and we know that this palliative is going to go a long way. What has happened in Plateau from the federal? Aisha Buhari, we don't know how to thank you more than we say God bless you. Items distributed consist of 10 kg bags of rice, blankets and food condiments, while the Plateau State Government received cartons of face masks and infrared thermometers. In just Alisa Botukai Andrew, NTA News. That's a wrap from Joss. Joseph is back to you. Have a good evening. Many thanks, Miriam. All right. Uh, the federal government court, uh, rather the federal high court sitting in Port Harcourt has remanded a three foreign nationals and six Nigerians at the correctional center pending the ruling of bail application in a criminal matter brought against them by the federal government. The nine defendants are facing trial of a seven count charge of aiding and abetting terrorism, concealing of vital information and possession of illegal firearms by the office of Attorney General and Minister of Justice. Kinsley Amajiri has more. The nine defendants are standing trial before Honorable Justice Mohammed Sani of Federal High Court Port Harcourt. The charges brought out on aiding and abating terrorism, concealment of vital information towards the fight against terrorism, facilitating payment of ransom worth $200,000 and possession of illegal arms. The defendants pleaded not guilty. Prosecution counsel Labra Mogaji thereafter asked the court to put them on trial and remand them pending the determination of the matter. The defense counsel, Abimbola Akaredolu, SAN, however, applied for bail. Justice Sunny thereafter fixed August 10 for ruling on bail application and commencement of trial. The court equally adjourned this bail ruling till the 10th of um, uh, August 2020. And the course is clear for the commencement of the trial and the prosecution are ably ready. The people who paid the ransom came to our people and said, we've paid ransom, please take them from where they have been released to our embassy. After doing that, my client then gets arrested. These my clients get arrested. The matter before Justice Musa is in connection with our pirate attack on a vessel and subsequent kidnap of the crew members off the coast of Equatorial Guinea in Port Harcourt, Kingsley, Amajiri, NTA News. To sports now, countdown to Tokyo Olympics in 2021 begins. Kene Ema Abudige brings us more on sports update. Enugu state government has restated its commitments towards the welfare of its athletes, hence the approval.